morning all just pulled in there just to check the sat nav i'm heading to the beach today i'm on the east coast of ireland uh, the sat nav says i should be at the beach in about nine minutes time i just wanted to make a, a quick video because i get asked by many of you um in the comments section if i regret selling the aprilia rs660 um, because I did trade that bike in for this, my Triumph Street Triple 765 RS. Uh, just double check, that was a funny junction. Um, the short answer is no, I don't regret it. So thanks a million for tuning in, folks. I'll see you at the same time next week. And welcome back <laughs> thanks for sticking with me folks uh, I do have to address in all seriousness uh, why I did trade in the RS660 um, on reflection I perhaps didn't explain it uh, well enough at the time I just couldn't wait to get my hands on this bike um, the uh, I'm gonna pretty much split it into categories looks wise when I first got back into biking again four years ago after taking my 30-year break a lot of people were suggesting getting a street triple um, because of my size because of what i wanted out of a bike and whatever else and uh, when i was looking at the street triples then i i honestly thought they were the ugliest bike on the road all because of that bulbous head uh, arrangement at the front i uh, really oh, it didn't sit well with me at all uh, and now <laughs> fast forward four years to this uh, latest generation of uh, a street triple the 765 rs i honestly think it's the most beautiful bike I've potentially ever seen <laughs> uh, whatever they did to the headlight arrangement on the front they've just streamlined it they've just fine-tuned it they've finessed everything um, so looks wise uh, the street triple just ticks every single box for me as did the Aprilia I have to be honest uh, back at the time when I first saw the Aprilia again uh, yeah obviously I have a thing for headlights because it was the headlights uh, which first made me noticed the Aprilia I thought it was uh, stunning looking those uh, angular headlights um, cross over here smiley face looking at me over there um, I dare say a biker in his spare time <laughs> um, but uh, yeah so obviously looks wise with any bike it's all subjective it's, what does it for you uh, the Aprilia did do it back then um, still does in many ways <laughs> in fact one of the bikes I test rode when I was looking to get the RS660 was the Tuono and I just didn't like the gap on the Tuono between the the cockpit and the rest of the bike there was a big gap um, uh, 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 which just I didn't like at all it, it, it was like somewhere you could put your luggage and that turned me off the Tuono in retrospect I think the Tuono might have been better for me because the riding position I found after owning the RS660 for a couple of years, I just found it was getting a little bit too much weight on my wrists. I wasn't as upright as I would have been on the Tuono and uh, dare I say obviously on the Street Triple. Um, even though the RS here, the 765RS, is raised up by 20 millimeters compared to the 765R model i was a little bit concerned about that because i sort of bought this blind and had never ridden one before um so i was again concerned that the weight was going to be in my wrists on this bike absolutely not so um this is like the perfect riding position for me um when it comes to the engine obviously this is a, a triple the rs 660 was a parallel twin um, now, apologies, all I can do here is to play your library footage from the RS660 because obviously I don't own the bike anymore, so I can't just jump on it and give you my thoughts now. It's uh, having to be made in uh, retrospect. But uh, yeah, the parallel twin, uh, I, uh, well, I love a parallel twin because uh, you can get a lot of thrills and spills and excitement uh, quite, quite low down within the box. Uh, whereas the characteristic of the triple is uh, obviously much higher up in the box uh, so I have to say this did take a little bit of getting used to I think I'm nearly there with it although I haven't done any really long journeys yet um, but uh, yeah once you're above sort of 8,000 on a bike like this uh, that's where the excitement really uh, turns into something else another dodgy junction don't know where I am by the way I'm 
but I know I'm not far from the beach. Um, so, uh, I mean, the, the quick shift uh, on this bike, as everybody says who has reviewed this bike, uh, it is buttery smooth, and it really is. I mean, it's hilarious when I then get on my GS after riding this bike <laughs> and use its quick shifter. I mean, it's chalk and cheese. Um, it really would cut through butter, this uh, quick shifter on here. So, uh, the quick shifter accompanied with the triple engine, it's phenomenal power. And uh, I mean, it's got 128 brake horsepower, this bike. Uh, and there have been several occasions where the front wheel has lifted even in second gear, just under power, without even trying to lift the bike. Um, so, there is plenty of excitement. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, the, the gearing on this is, uh, I mean, dare I say a little bit strange it takes some getting used to as well because second third and fourth uh, and fifth are, are quite sh short they've uh, stretched out the first gear and obviously when you hit sixth you're already well on your way um, but uh, it's a lot of fun getting up the box into sixth but you don't spend too long within that range if you know what I mean um, the other thing to accompany the engine of course on this bike is the brakes the style lemas um, even though the um, Aprilia had Brembo's they weren't style lemas so uh, this bike the 765 RS uh, I think you've got the hang of when I say this bike which bike I'm talking about now so I shall stop name checking it um, but because it has the master cylinder uh, and span adjust on uh, clutch and brake as well you can really feather the bike uh, feather the brakes you can tailor make the bike to your own needs your own wants um, actually that's another thing which I will come on to uh, the suspension on the Aprilia was perfect um, and needed very little tuning I did get it tuned uh, by a guy uh, on a racetrack um, but uh, it, w it was really quite nice and soft on the Aprilia uh, and uh, I have to say I prefer the suspension on the Aprilia and now maybe a lot of that is down to me not uh, playing around enough even though I have made a video about playing around with suspension on on this street triple it seems perfect for the minute um, I suspect when I start uh, taking this bike to the track over the summer um, like well like any bike I'll have to stiffen it up a little bit I can see the sea um, but the good thing about this bike is that, well, same as the RS660, it's fully adjustable. So you can tailor make it. But uh, I was a little bit shocked to receive this bike and uh, the suspension was actually way out. Um, in the manual it says it comes set to the road setting, the standard Triumph road settings. Uh, not so. It was all over the place when I went in to fine tune it. And thank God I did. Um, a few people about. There's the sea. First time I've seen the sea this year, I think. Oh, I don't believe it. I've got a friend here with a coffee... Oh, no, she is here. That's her coffee truck there. My friend called Kira. So I shall go down here and turn around and go back and uh, grab, a, grab a coffee from Kira. She sells wonderful coffee. She's just a, a great person all around, full of energy. Hopefully you'll see that in a moment. The other thing I want to talk about is uh, wind protection. Really quite surprised for a naked bike on the Triumph because uh, obviously there's no wind protection. But I was fully expecting, as on my Royal Enfield, that there might be a bit of buffeting, be, um, you know, because of the headlight arrangement, uh, especially sticking so far forward on this bike. But it's so smooth, I don't know how to do that. But I've obviously tested it in a wind tunnel, but it is a really smooth bike for a for an air kit. Um, the screen on the RS660 was incredible. Um, that offered me as much protection as the screen on my GS. Um, so great wind protection on both bikes. Uh, the Comfort, I did do some nice long trips on the RS660. This is really nice scene, isn't it? The Comfort on the RS660 for a long day it was just amazing it really was uh, uh, apart from and again that's down to me not the bike apart from the weight on my wrists for my shape size weight uh, there's another biker um, 
so yeah the comfort was fantastic the seat was amazing on the rs660 as well it is on this as well um, in many ways uh, <laughs> these these bikes are very similar um, i suppose ultimately what it comes down to is that i never really found a place for the rs660 i never woke up on a sunday morning and thought oh god i'd love to go out on that i felt as though i had to ride it rather than want to ride it if that makes sense I've yeah, I felt as though I just had to go out on it occasionally to make uh, a video uh, for you guys. I mean, it had a suite of electronics, all the latest wheelie controls, uh, six axis IMU, amazing braking, uh, everything else, ABS, you know, uh, all the ride modes, um, everything, uh, again, which this has to offer as well. So I did feel completely safe on it, and I was forever questioning myself why I just didn't feel totally in love with it I suppose for want of a better phrase uh, and I knew after questioning for well, god nigh on a year why I wasn't having all these feelings about that bike I knew it was time to get rid so when this came along and I started seeing the press photographs of it I just thought oh my god that is just amazing looking and that's why I plumbed for this the other thing to address about the Aprilia, of course, is reliability. Um, because halfway through the order process, when I was on the waiting list, I think for about six months for that bike, I actually cancelled the order because I've been uh, scared by all the horror stories when the bike was released in the US, first of all, uh, with all the engine problems. Um, but anyway, I thought better of it, and I got myself back on the waiting list, went ahead, obviously, with the purchase. And uh, in the two years of ownership, I never had a single issue. The bike was 100% reliable. I think when I traded it in for this, I had 4,300 kilometers on it. Not a great deal, but enough, oops, the daisy, but enough to, um, to basically iron out any problems. And like I say, there was absolutely none. Electric Garda car, what will they think of next? Um, so yeah, in terms of reliability, if you're thinking about getting an RS660, uh, there's zero problems with that, for me, uh, anyway. And uh, I, d I know there was a recall, or a few recalls actually, to sort out issues, and uh, fair play to Aprilia, they did exactly that. Um, uh, service and costs, just the same as any other bike really that I have, 10,000 kilometres or 6,000 miles, um, and uh, sort of standard price in, in around 250 euro. I only had it serviced twice because <laughs> like I say I only had it for the two years but uh, so back to today just to round off this video I hope this has answered your questions and concerns by the way if there's anything else you want to know please let me know in the comments what you'd like to know about either bike but really <coughs> excuse me I'm just getting over a bad cold really this is gorgeous scenery isn't it I've been sidetracked here it comes down to what takes me fancy at the time what I prefer and at the moment uh, I can honestly say hand on heart that this Triumph Street Triple is the best bike I've ever ridden ever owned it just does everything I want from a bike it feels part of me I feel totally connected to it um, the riding position is amazing the comfort's incredible uh, the wind buffeting is not too much at all uh, for a naked bike uh, and it's just full of excitement uh, for me and again uh, as you know if you've followed me for a while um, one thing my bikes must do even when I'm not riding them is to make me want to ride them and to look at and be as excited looking at them as I am riding them uh, so there you go folks I've said all I can say really um, I hope that has put your mind at ease for those of you <laughs> <laughs> there were some genuinely concerned people out there who bought uh, an Aprilia uh, on the back of me buying one as well. And uh, I hope you're still enjoying your bikes, guys. Um, I really just couldn't find a place for mine. Nothing wrong with the bike. It's all to do with me. It's all in my head, in my little grey matter. Right, folks, I'm going to get a coffee from my lovely friend Kira here. And uh, I shall see you back on YouTube 8 o'clock next Saturday morning. Have a great week everybody, ride safe, um, give me an, an old like and a subscribe if you haven't done already, appreciate that, and uh, sure I'll chat to you next week. Dave Perry, really good TV, over and out.